gig economy on demand labor. This is a new way of looking and thinking about work. Just recently, the unemployment's kind of fully exhausted themselves, but I don't think that's going to magically just make all these jobs appear again. There are more than 10 million open jobs in the United States, the highest level ever. People have found a different way to make a living. Where did all the workers go? Everywhere you look, every corner you pass, whether you're in the middle of the country, in a major city, workers wanted, we're hiring 20 plus dollars an hour for entry, you know, very manual oriented jobs all over the place. We got an article here, CNBC, there are more than 10 million open jobs in the United States, the highest level ever. Yet over 1 million more jobs than unemployed people. So 10 million open jobs, 9 million on the unemployed. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, right? Right? Almost one third of small business owners say they have had open positions they're unable to fill for at least three months, double the level from a year ago. Over 40% are experiencing a rising cost of worker wages. So what's the rub? Does it make any sense? Does it? What could the role of platforms and the new economy, the new digital economy, be having on these very traditional uh, measures of workforce and labor participation? Great question. Let's jump to the state of the gig economy. The gig economy is booming as Americans search for non-traditional employment. This is from July 2021. The number of independent contractors and freelancers, aka gig workers, has grown exponentially in recent years and is likely to continue accelerating as a result of COVID-19, with approximately 30 million Americans already receiving their primary income. Not just a, you know, a supplemental primary income from gig work. When COVID-19 hit, many U.S. businesses found themselves more reliant on independent workers as part of their critical workforce. The trend toward an increase in the gig workforce is anticipated to continue as American workers search for non-traditional forms of employment that can offer more flexibility and a healthier lifestyle. Recent study found that 56% of employees would consider resigning if flexibility is not maintained post-pandemic. On the employer side, a recent poll said nearly 65% of employers, respondents, anticipated that their gig workforce would grow over the next year. So how can we kind of quantify what this means? What is the gig economy? By this study here, some 93 million workers participated in the gig economy in 2020, an increase of over a third from 2019. Gig income was up by the same amount to 1.6 trillion from 1.2 trillion. The study defines gig as temporary or part-time work contracted by independent workers for short-term engagements. Basically, it's this is the the platform. This is the labor marketplace, uh, service marketplace platform economy. Uh, I've been covering this for man uh, at least half a decade at this point. Let's talk about Uber and Lyft. Let's talk about being able to rent your house out on Airbnb, rent a car out on Getaround or Turo. Uh, Let's talk about Upwork and all these kind of uh, remote, you know, labor marketplaces. Let's talk about labor marketplaces for trucking. There's labor marketplaces to to work on oil rigs called Rig Up. They've raised uh, an absurd amount of money. $800 $800 million, now called WorkRise, on-demand workforce management, hiring platform to empower people, get w- hard work done. Started out, I guess, focused on you know oil rigs. Raised $800 million, right? These are big companies just in these specialized, there's um, like trade hound for building material and construction contractors. There's now Instacart and food delivery, right? Uh, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. There's Dolly for, uh, you know, to use a van to go pick up a couch or a fridge in a garage sale that you got, right? There's, there's a slew of basically service marketplaces, right? You're going to hire a service, you're going to hire labor, you're going to hire time, or you're going to, you know, rent someone's car, or their house, gig economy. This is the gig economy, traditional jobs hourly, many of them hourly jobs, you know, you, you have a full-time 
uh, employer, you're on a W-2, right? Those jobs are falling out of vogue because you've got you got to come into work. You can't make your own schedule. So you don't have that flexibility, which was the first point. I think coupled with one, COVID, being able to make your own schedule, being able to find alternative sources of income, which you may or may not have to claim all that income to the IRS. Yes, uh, that's a definitely a big loophole, big concern for the federal government um, is how do they actually get paid all this, their, their taxes. Uh, from these 1099, you know, myriad of different platform models. But, you know, you could still be getting unemployment benefits. You could still be making money on the side. And now just recently, the unemployment's kind of fully exhausted themselves. But I don't think that's going to magically just make all these jobs appear again. I think people have found a different way to make a living, enjoyed the flexibility um, enjoyed being able to make their own schedule. Maybe they're making more money or maybe they're just able to make enough money um, and spend more time with their family or what, you know, whatever their everyone's situation is. But it's a very different environment than having to go drive a truck cross country, be away from your family for days at a time. Or you say, could I go drive for Uber? Right. Um, or could I go use Uber freight, for example, and just do one off jobs that you know, um, you know, suit me, right? And kind of have a, a mixture. You could be using multiple different apps, make a variety of different um, cocktail of, of different work that you could be doing, right? Um, you could walk a dog and make 20 plus dollars an hour, okay? You can do um, so many things, right? There are labor marketplaces to go and work in a warehouse, but you just do it on the fly, kind of on demand. I think this is a sea change in terms of the thinking around what it means to have a full-time job with a set schedule and do those uh, types of jobs now need to ultimately pay more? And what is that going to do to the cost of goods? It's going to go up. It's going to continue to go up because there's this insane labor shortage. And the extension of the uh, unemployment benefits, I think is why you, you see 9 million people on unemployment they're not all not working. They're working. They're doing stuff on the side. Okay. You can get your unemployment benefits and you can kind of go do a job here or there and you can still make, you can make even more money than you used to be making. And you kind of say, wow, this is pretty good. Maybe I could just, once the unemployment benefits go away, maybe I could just keep doing this or I could do, you know, a few of these other on-demand gigs. And um, I think it's force a whole part of the economy to Try that out and say, you know, again, human behavior, right? How do, you, how do you get human behavior to change? Very difficult thing to do. But now you just had tens of millions of people do this for many, 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 many months and say, you know, this is actually not too bad. I kind of like it. Maybe I'll just keep doing it. Maybe I don't need to go back to my full-time job. Hmm. Okay. More than a third of respondents who are doing supply chain related jobs said gig work was, its, was itself a full-time job, right? A full-time affair. Many are juggling three or four gig jobs to make up a full work week. There you go. It's a lot of people. 43% of the gig workers have a total household income of over $50,000, although most make less than $15,000 a year from gig work alone. In the supply chain, 85% of supply chain gig workers like what they're doing, right? They like this flexibility as opposed to always being on the go or away from fam family, et cetera. Now let's look at Uber. This is their Q2 earnings report. In Q2, we invested in recovery by investing in drivers. And we made strong progress with monthly active drivers and careers in the U.S. increasing by nearly 420,000. Monthly active drivers increasing by 420,000 from February to July of 2021, right? A lot. Look at this from Kroger. Kroger says finding talent is grocery operator's greatest challenge as it teams up with Instacart, a gig economy platform company, Kroger has 20,000 job openings. We're aggressively hiring anywhere we can. One of the biggest constraints we have now is finding talented people. The retailer announced Tuesday that it teamed up with Instacart to increase its ability to fulfill online grocery orders and get them to customers' doors. And how is Instacart solving this labor challenge with gig economy on-demand labor? This is a big shift. I don't think this is going away. 
93 million Americans already in the gig economy. What? 93 million. Accelerating by a third, that was 2019 to 2020. I think you're going to see, as the numbers get calculated, 2020, 2021, I think you're going to see also another huge increase in gig economy labor participation. This is a new way of looking and thinking about work. And it's going to change the fundamental cost structure for large traditional companies that either don't want to deploy or employ a kind of on-demand, more flexible kind of gig economy type of labor model. You see Kroger doing the deal with Instacart. Um, and if they're only sticking to what they used to do, uh, which is, you know, full-time jobs uh, or, you, you know, and really wanting, w- putting that um, as their primary mechanism of, of solving labor, that you can't do that anymore. You now need to actually have I think embrace this duality of yes, you have full time, um, and what constitute and what would you pay for a full time dedicated employee to uh, be in a warehouse, drive a truck, handle supply chain fulfillment stuff in in you know in in the grocery back office or you know in your DCs et cetera, versus having flex labor. I think you have to embrace that duality. Hi, I'm Alex. Thanks for watching the show. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, but even better, make sure to follow us on Odyssey, follow us on Rumble, and text us 203-646-5159. Text the word Monopoly. You'll be subscribed. You'll get updates about when we're going live, our latest videos, and we'll send you even a little goodie bag. And in the event that we all get banned from big tech, we'll still be connected.